Now we have a uh, government that's spending, you know, spending a fortune opening up art centres all over the country, encouraging more and more and more and more and more and more people to paint in order to create enterprise, uh, as if it's the only enterprise that's suitable, the, or the Aboriginal communities and the Aboriginal people are going to take up. Um, and that's, that, there's a reason for that, of course. There's, a, there's an absence of enterprise opportunities in a lot of places, and uh, Aboriginal people can be, have proven to be incredibly creative. And, and it's a, but, but still, art is not an employment strategy. Right? <laughs> no, but I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, work, work, whatever your, uh, whatever your, your, your social background and all that kind of stuff, that, that uh, and whatever your position is, it's like you know, she was talking about you know, some of the, 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 the mental health service she was, the, that she's working with. There's this, this kind of, um, I think sometimes when things are dressed up in the language of enterprise, um, and it's, you know, it is one of those kind of fuzzy, you know, sort of LP, sort of minority government words or something. Um, I think very often it's not really about that. It really is about um, a, a, almost a, a, a kind of a, a, an alibi for providing something which might be fulfilling emotionally and, and, and socially to people, you know, wherever they are and then wherever they're from and all the rest of it. So, you know, that sense of um, engaging in creativity, of growing through creativity, of actually feeling um, whole through creativity seems to me the really important thing. You know, if I really, really thought that all of these so-called you know, kind of enterprise schemes were really there because it was all about making money ultimately, then you know, I, I don't know what I'd do. Because I think really, I think the enterprise thing is, is, is really kind of a political alibi as much as anything else for actually providing places where, where wholeness might be attained. You know, that's, that's a, you know, again, kind of unfashionable word, but it's kind of it's a spiritual thing. You know, that the art making, yeah, you might make money from it, but art making is a kind of spiritual pursuit because it's about wholeness, it's about it's about kind of self integrity, but it's also mm -hmm. about communicating. So I just ask you a question um, that fascinates me about uh, outside of art. I mean you collect outside of mm -hmm. art. How much what percentage of outside of art that you would collect would be by unknown artists? Well, a lot. It's <coughs> just I do things that I write about and they're, they're not unknown anymore. So but it's you know, it's I mean where, when when I see art that I love and when I see art that that that, uh, that, that kind of speaks to me, it's precisely on those kind of those, those sort of things. And it's about whether it's speaking to me, it's about whether <coughs> Never be an outsider artist. 
I mean, they, they, they might be they might be within a cultural context which um, has um, a, a different kind of relationship of power to to some kind of dominant cultural context, but that doesn't turn them into outsiders. You know, within their context, they they're very much you know part of something and, and, and a, an integral part of something. But for me. Um, if I was going to be pushed to, to sort of define outsider art and outsider artist, it's those people who, living within sets of context, kind of don't belong, for want of a better word, in those contexts. You know, they're, they're idiosyncratic, they're eccentric, they're, they're different to the cultural context that they're working in. I mean, the, the George Melly, who's a, a sort of British jazz singer, a raconteur, um, writing about, um, a, a, a writing about um, British naive art, um, described those people as, as, as a tribe of one. You know, this whole notion that you, know, you, 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 you have people often who, who have a whole worldview, a whole kind of you know, cosmogony, a whole kind of way of thinking about the universe and their life and all the rest of it. And they're kind of physically within a particular context, but it's really different and really kind of, you know, if you like, outside that context that they're living in. So, you know, for me, it's not about saying, um, you know, a particular set of people are outsiders. It's about saying a particular person might be an outsider artist in the sense that their, their kind of whole construct of what it is to be an artist and what it is to be in the universe is kind of different to everybody else around them. And in a way that is not just a sort of a, a kind of an artistic gambit, but is actually lived and, um, and sort of breathed. So it's, you know, in that sense, there aren't that many outside of artists. So that's a, that, it's, it's almost like the, the sort of the, the furthest kind of um, extreme point of what you were describing in terms of, you know, every artist being an outsider. Yeah, outsider. Outside. Yeah, I'm not an outsider artist. But, um, yes, I, I, I agree. So is Billy uh, Ben an outsider <coughs> artist from uh, the perspective of indigenous art in from his area or from the perspective of Western art, which he seems to have adopted some of the... Um, conventions of, but it, or is, is he an outsider of both, or is he not an outsider artist? Well, I don't think he's an outsider artist. Um, I suppose we could. Downstairs. We'd be a great response. Um, in the sense that you know, he is demonstrably engaged with a number of recognised traditions. Um, is fantastic, I love it. Um, he's a great ex expressionist for the small You know, I mean, I think for me, mm -hmm. Billy Ben is, is, a, is a, 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 a really interesting and, 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 um, and powerful exponent of a kind of expressionism where, where, where you're defining expressionism as a, a sort of a tendency, a way of picturing the world, as opposed to, you know, something that happened in Germany in 1910 or something that happened in America in 1940. <coughs> Um, but that sense of, you know, his, his kind of putative outsiderness is his learning disability. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in contemporary Australia, there's absolutely no excuse, I don't think, to, um, to, to, to sort of pigeonhole and box a person with a learning disability. A learning disability into you know, the sense of, of being you know, an outsider with a capital O. 